Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of With Disadvantage. As usual, I'm your host and DM, Chev. And today's episode is not quite 13, it's 13.1, and there's a reason for that. We are uh, doing individual one-on-one -on -one sessions this week with each of the characters. And uh, today's is the first one, and we will... I know that may not make sense, since we were all together as a group last time, but uh, it will make sense as we go through them. Chev, where is everyone? I'm scared. <laughs> All right. Uh, can you see? No, you need this map, the ancient chamber. You want me to select it right now? Yeah, open it up. Yep, I see. Okay. All right. So, you have found yourself in this chamber after following your comrades through the uh, um, the Dominion ruins. You found your way into the tunnels, and as soon as you got down here, you were all drawn into this odd-looking chamber with this ancient tech. There's like this ancient writing uh, around some of the prongs around this thing, and it's glowing blue and emitting blue energy. In front of it is a little computer console, which you can see behind giant Piratesh here. Up here, I'll put her up here. <laughs> um, the computer console looks very similar to the one you guys dealt with when you turned on and off the water. And as you come into this room, you see Piratesh appear and tower over Dragthar and Naya, who are at the front there. And she says, Dragthar, you have returned. And then you, Dragthar looks up at her and he says, Uh, uh, sorry. I guess I forgot to introduce you. So, <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure I, I didn't mention Bunsen Gyro is playing today. Normally he uh. plays Marina. All right, so Dragthar looks up to Piratesh, and he says, Piratesh, I see you once again. You granted me powers. Can you grant my friends powers as well? And she looks down, and, and she says, Your friends, they're here now. And he turns around, and he sees the rest of you across the platform. And he's like, What are you all doing here? And then uh, you, you look around, and you see that the rest of your party is sort of in a trance. They're like staring up at Piratesh, practically drooling on themselves. Uh, and they just kind of look like they're lost in their own little worlds. And you look up and you see, or, and you, you're able to look up and respond to Dragthar and Piratesh. You are not in a trance. Um, we, we were looking for the, a way to the pumps to try to stop the Dominion. We, we thought this was the way. Ah, uh, yes. I remember this conversation, though it was so long ago. You mentioned something of your your politics with the Dominion. I told you you could stop them uh, if you so chose, but I, I th had a feeling you would try to save the Era Cochrane Society first, but apparently you are here now. Very well. Come forward. She asked you to come forward to the front of the room. Uh, can, I, can I look again at my at my allies around me? Yes. You look to your left and you see a miniature Piratesh, Sam, <laughs> kind of staring up, facing Piratesh and just looking lost in a dream or something. Eyes wide open, mouth open. Just like, uh. I'm feeling very uncomfortable about this, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I would like to ask, uh, are they okay? Your friends will be fine. Step forward. I have a gift to bestow upon you. Can I make an insight check, considering if she were to have beef with anyone, she might have beef with me, considering I was least uh, accepting of who she claimed to be. <laughs> uh, yeah, roll insight. Uh, I can't. Oh. Yeah, I uh, my character, remember. Oh, right. Okay, here. I'll, roll, I'll handle your sheet for you in the meantime. Actually, you know what? Here, clear owner. Go to the PC thing. You can select Marina. Uh... Close the... There you go. Hey. Okay, now we're all in sight. Yeah, there's no reason why you can't choose Marina. For now. Nice. Almost a 20, but... Alright. So, she seems, you know, like she, like she's behaving like what you would expect a benevolent goddess to behave like. She seems genuine. But you don't know that for certain, but you don't get the impression that she's upset with you. At least not yet. It looks like there's a drop in front of me. What's that drop like? 
Um, it's just a few feet gap, and the, the, there used to be a bridge there, but the, the boards are now fallen into the pit. You can easily jump it. I don't even gonna make you roll for it. Alright, I'm gonna... I'm going to cautiously leap across the, the pit to start approaching. Okay. You leap a few feet across the gap, and you start to approach her. And she says, yes, come. Come forward. Uh, and then, so you're, you 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 go all the way up to Dragthar? Yeah, uh, cautiously. I'm a little discomforted by this uh, series of events. Now, as you approach, Dragthar is also looking up at Piratesh drooling, and Naya as well. Just like... Kind of lost in a trance, not like an ad, like, like looking up like they're admiring her or anything. They're just kind of like, like they're not there. They're vacant, basically. Um, I'm definitely like I'm visibly feeling uncomfortable by <laughs> what else is acting right now. Okay, you step forward and and Piratesh shrinks down quite a bit, so she takes a full body form instead of just her like the big bust form that was, and she shrinks down and she steps forward. And she just says, "You have gifts that you are unaware of already." And then she sticks her hand, her like little uh, spiritual hologram hand, whatever it is, uh, onto your head. And she just says, "Let me restore what has already been given to you." Okay. And then everything goes black. And now I gotta close this, and I gotta kick you. Uh, can you let go of your care? Let's see. How do I do this? Clear owner. There we go. Take ownership as GM. Okay. Should the sound cut. Oh yes, good call. Thank you. I, I imagine that I the always sound cut that. right when everything went to black. Yes. Okay, let me make sure I get the right sound started. So is this the part where you tell me to roll up a new character? <laughs> <laughs> no. <clears throat> okay. So. Suddenly, you, you everything goes black, the cave fades out, and you wake up, and you are staring at um, a door. So, and then as you look around, you look at the, at the door, you kind of your arms kind of outstretched uh, on and holding the doorknob, and you look down, you realize that you are now a pale-skinned young woman, probably slightly older than you than Marina. You you are. Um, and you are holding a baby. Uh, let's see, I have this little descriptor here. So you find yourself in the body of a young woman. She has pale skin and appears to be in her mid-twenties. You notice that you are carrying a small infant swaddled in a white cloth. The baby coos as she notices you looking down at her. And after a moment, you realize that you are poised in front of the door, partly cracked open with your hand on the knob as though you had just opened it to go inside. Or perhaps you're about to close it. You don't know. You don't have any memories of how you got here or what you're doing or even who you are. Uh, an ornate sign on the door reads the Jade family. As you go to peer inside, a voice pipes up behind you. Tess, there you are. You turn and you see a tall, broad-shouldered, tanned male approach the porch steps behind you. You briefly notice that behind him... Uh, let's see, I have this bubble here. I wrote, I've been using Fantasy Grounds cool story features. Let's see, you briefly notice that behind him in the street is some sort of large construct that appears to be almost entirely made out of white and yellow crystal. The construct's midsection appears to be floating about a foot above its lower half, only connected by some sort of tendril of energy. The entity slowly lumbers by, paying you no mind, as the man continues to stare at you with a concerned look. <clears throat> Everything all right? You and little Norris ready to head out? How do you respond? Do I have any new memories or knowledge? Nope. You have all of Marina's memories. That's it. You suddenly find yourself in this place. And then overhead, by the way, are like an assortment of flying pods just zooming overhead periodically. What's the sky look like? It's blue. A uh, few clouds, but mostly a clear day. And you see a bunch of these pods flying overhead, and, and you also see some really high-rise, like, sort of roads or bridges that kind of tower up into the horizon. Um, but around you is basically a small little suburb, like little little houses. There's, uh, there's actually, they've paved the street with something. It's not just a dirt street. They've put some sort of substance over it to make it nice, flat, and smooth. Um, and then these this little, like, 
magical golem thing is lumbering by right behind you, but the dude that's talking to you doesn't seem to pay it any mind, and the golem doesn't pay you guys any mind. I'm imagining that I'm probably going to be silent for a little while as I'm just taking in everything around me, trying to re think where I am, and so on. Okay, and so Beck is really starting to get concerned now, not getting a response, and... Uh, sorry, I, I guess I revealed his name, but anyway, pretend you don't know it yet. <laughs> and he just says, Tess! Tess! And he snaps at you. Uh, yeah? Are you okay? Do we need to go see the doctor? Uh, I... Who's Tess? Uh... Alright, you know we don't have time for practical jokes, right? Uh, get, bring little Narice, and we gotta get to the conference. I suppose an insight check would be useless. <laughs> uh, that's up to you. Uh, can I make an insight check to, on like his earnestness and his ur urgency? Yes. There, let me get your sheet open. Cool. Okay, I can roll these for you now. Okay, so uh, he seems excited. Uh, you don't really know why, but he seems like he's excited, and he's he's friend uh, he's very friendly, gesturing for you to come with him. And he clearly seems to act like he knows you very well. I'm visibly uncomfortable with what's happening, but rather than alert him further, I suppose I'll go with him because he clearly knows more about what's going on than I do. Okay. All right, so uh, he's like, all right, come on, come on. I forgot to make you coffee this morning. I had a lot to do, a lot to repair for today. So I'm sure that's why you're out of sorts. Uh, and then he puts his fingers in his mouth and he does that whistle. I can't do it, but, you know, just whistles for a vehicle. <laughs> and one of those pods out of the sky immediately comes down. And then it kind of parks itself right in front of you on the, the asphalt. And then uh, the door slides open on the side, and it just looks like a giant, almost like an Apple AirPod. This little tiny little neck coming out the back, and then the bulbous part of like what would like an earbud in the front is the passenger area. And uh, the door slides open, almost like little wings on the sides. Come on, Tess. Come on, bring the Reese. We gotta go. Uh, I I follow. Him. Okay. And you get inside, and it's this perfectly pristine and sterilized uh, pod. Very comfortable seats, and the wing door is kind of they kind of cl they close, and uh, it almost gets like a whole new atmosphere in here. It's like perfect temperature, not too hot, not too cold, and then the maglev pod departs, and it lifts up, and and you're flying at incredible speeds through the air. Except for you don't feel like you are. There's no inertial forces whatsoever as you look out the window. Um, just very I, calmly as the pod, pod goes by. Could I ask could I ask him a question? Uh-huh. Uh, I would like to ask him at this point. Um, is Are we in the solar planes? The, the what? Are, I, you, are you sure we don't need to turn around? I... Sorry, I don't know what's happening here. I don't have time for this test. If we, we we either it's an emergency and we need to go see the doctor, or I have to get to this conference. You agreed that you would bring Nerys with me with you to the conference so that we can spend time afterward. R rather than uh, push and or rather than press and become more uncomfortable, because it seems like I've very clearly made him uncomfortable. I suppose I'll. Uh, keep silent. Okay. All right. And he he kind of just looks you up and down, and and he's like, "Don't worry. I know it's I know it's nerves. It's it's a lot. You're gonna have to you're gonna finally get to see what we've been working on. But uh, I know it can be overwhelming. And I know that you haven't seen a lot of me. You and Narice deserve my presence. You deserve me to be home more. Don't worry. After today, everything is going to be different." And then the pod sets down, kind of spirals down. You're spiraling over the city, by the way. There's, like, big city with all these tall buildings all over the place. Think of, like, New York City, basically, but way more futuristic-looking. 
Um, and these pods are just going up and down in every which way. Uh, kind of like if you've ever seen the Star Wars prequels on um, Coruscant. Like all those flying vehicles everywhere. Just crisscrossing through the grid of the city. And the pod just... Your pod gets right in line and descends in like perfect unison with these other pods. Right down onto the ground. And you feel no inertial forces as you immediately come to a halt and the, and the doors slide open. Um, you guys step out and you see a ton of people dressed very nicely. Very... Very swanky as they're walking into this huge, um, like auditorium convention center looking thing. And, and what does he and I wear? You guys are also dressed very nicely. You realize now that you're wearing like kind of a one piece little dress with, uh, um, not high heels, but, um, uh, like slightly raised heel shoes. I forget. What, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> but anyway, you look very nice. And, uh, so does Beck. And he, Beck looks like, really decked out like he's he's definitely almost outshines you with the way he's dressed um and it seems sort of out of place uh but you guys step out and there's tons of nice people they're all walking into the nice looking people they're all walking into this this place and in all these people are basically human like they have um a wide variety of hair colors and skin colors and and stuff but it's all it's all human skin tones nothing crazy um, like like nothing alien or whatever or, or whatnot. Um, basically, like you, Marina, except for they're not blue, and so they look very much like like yourself, except for the cut skin color. So you guys step out of the pod, and Beck says, "I've I've got to get ahead and get inside. You take Narice and find a spot in the back, and and uh, as soon as the conference is over and and the the brain is revealed, we'll I'll come I'll come get you, and and we'll go have a good time." The, the light brain? I've been telling you about it for months. The biggest revolutionary step forward in technology for Genasi society. Hello? I, Tess! I, I, I visibly, like, my my face brightens up a bit when, you, when he mentions Genasi, a uh, word that I actually recognize. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta go. Is my tie on straight? Um... I'm, is he motioning to his tie? Yes, he's like he's holding it out and okay. kind of pulling his chin up so you can see it. Okay. Uh, I I just nod and say, yeah, you look fine. Okay, great, great. All right, he pushes his way through the crowd, and uh, and goes inside, and then kind of leaves you to find a spot. Uh, as the crowd seems to just be pouring into this main hall, and the the big sign on the front says Chronotech Observatorium. Uh, so this this huge like auditorium thing, and so as you first walk in, there's like an outer hallway in this big circular building, and the outer hallway is filled with cases and stuff like that all over the place, like glass cases, and there's tons of different like technology and papers and stuff that you don't really know, you don't recognize any of it, uh, but it clearly looks like it's not out of place to anyone else. Um, you walk in through, like, pass through another set of doors and past that outer hallway, and you walk into the interior. In fact, why don't I get a map going so that we can draw? Because it's going to quickly become relevant. Uh oh. Hold on, my fantasy grounds is frozen. Oh, there we go. Should the sound be cut? Uh, yeah, as we're going inside, we can change the sound. Sure, sure. Okay, in fact, I think I have some... There you go. People funneling into the building. Alright, so Solstice. Create a new map. Just give me one sec. I should have created a scrap map ahead of time, but I didn't think about it. Images. Oh, you know what? I was I read the Jade family. I kept thinking like Jade, Jade. Where have I heard that before? I was like, oh yeah, that's why I named the librarian in my campaign. <laughs> oh, that's right. I didn't even think about that. I assume that's a coincidence. It <laughs> yeah, it is. Just now. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, I thought you'd find that funny. It is funny. Can you see this map? Yep. I see the two circles. Okay, uh, I kind of screwed it up, but that's more supposed to be even to represent the outer hallway, but it doesn't matter. So 
we're going to, in fact, you know what? I'm going to just erase those. And we're going to be inside the, the room. So it's going to look more like, oops, wrong tool. More like this. And then... And then the stage kind of comes out like this and goes back like this. So this is the stage. And then this is the exit right here. This is where you guys are coming in through. And there's one over here too that people are pouring through. So the front door is here. We're looking down at the top of this room and there's just people standing all over in here. It like an so, auditorium. Yeah, but there's, they're all standing and it's got really nice carpet. And it's not as as big as like outside. It looked a lot bigger. Um, like the like the conference was going to be a lot bigger, and it is. There's people standing out in the hallways and watching screens, but inside the main room here, it looks like only like the most elite of the elite are allowed to be this close to the stage and stuff. Everyone else is watching on some sort of screen or something in other rooms. So tons of people. Just forgive all my bad drawing. Um, and then up on the stage, there is a sort of pedestal that's just kind of perched up here and then there's like a, a cloth towel covering it covering the top of the pedestal and um, suddenly you see Beck show up on stage up top the, the dude you've been hanging out with and talking to uh, hold on a second Do I, I recognize what's on the pedestal right hold on oh sorry my wife texted me and it was about a pig never mind uh, do you recognize what's on the pedestal? No. Although, the, you recognize what a towel is, since you have a towel, and so it's got, like, this towel over it, but it's a white towel. Your towel's blue. Okay. <laughs> I was like... <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. And so, so Beck gets up on stage, and, and suddenly you realize why he's dressed nicer. He is addressing the crowd. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this now, because everyone's funneling in. It's all calming down. And they're all waiting, and kind of the lights dim, and there's this big uh, ordeal going up, going on on stage. They're setting something up. Clearly, there's something on the pedestal that they're about to show off. Where am I in the crowd? Um, that is a good question. Let's get you into the tracker here. Where did it go? Sorry, hold on. It's not. There we go. All right, Tess. I got so many windows open. Did it work? There you are. Okay. Now let's put your token there. Oops. And then I guess I'll draw a grid here. You said I had human color skin? Um. Yes, so just pretend. It's just the default SMR token. SMR. Or Genasi, excuse me. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Then we have a grid. Can you see the grid? Yep. Okay. Uh, cool. So you you can take place wherever you would like. He he did say take pl take pick a place in the back. Okay. Um, I'll try to follow his advice then. Okay, so you you can mingle anywhere. There's kind of these tall tables, like you can't sit at them. They're like tall enough that you'd have to stand them at them. Just small, like conversational tables where people can set down their their fancy drinks and stuff. There's, they're clearly all drinking like wine and champagne or you know whatever some some sort of fancy drink um, that you as a character probably would not recognize. And uh, so you can take place around some of those tables. You can just stand amongst people, or you can just stay against the the back wall here. The, there you can't stay right up against the back wall because they've kind of got it roped off with like these velvet ropes. Uh, by the way, I'm not able to move. That's okay. I'll move. I'll move it wherever. You just tell me. Hey. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll try to stay at the back. Okay. So is that right? Is about right there good? Um, assuming that like the circles aren't indicative of like the density of people, right? No, I just drew a bunch of random shit. So you can kind of see, like, the floor area and that this is where all the people are. Okay, yeah, this is fine. Okay. All right, let me get my next story thing open. There we go. 
Okay. So, Beck gets on stage and takes position behind a thin pedestal in front of him. The pedestal begins to glow yellow from the bottom, and Beck pipes up, and, uh, and he just says, Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our latest reveal. Chronotech is glad to have you here, and we're very proud to show off our next next revol- evolution of technology. Genasi Society is already well ahead of where we were even 10 years ago, and now everything's about to change. Bear with us here while we while we get this ready. And so the pedestal begins to glow yellow from the bottom as some kind of energy is channeled upward slowly through the pedestal. Uh, the crowd looks on with bright-eyed curiosity as the energy glow continues traveling upward until it reaches the top where it's obfuscated by a white towel covering something atop the pedestal. Specks of colorful light find their way through the fabric as the energy channels its way into whatever device lies under the covering. And then Beck continues, We have grown to become an adept and enlightened society. Millennia ago here on Ganath, life began in in the primordial soup of amino acids that formed the first proteins. Once the first cells were formed, our destiny was laid before us. We've come a long way since those single-celled organisms that first formed our planet, uh, excuse me, first formed on our planet and brought Ganath to life. Since then, we've mastered agriculture, industry, chemistry, astrophysics, quantum mechanics. We've even learned to harness the coronal power of the stars themselves. And he gestures up to a screen behind him, and there's a large like star pictured on the screen. A big sun, burning, burning ball of, of fire. And he kind of gestures towards it as he's talking. And he says, we've even learned to harness the coronal power of the stars themselves and use it to power our great ships so we can travel to the far corners of the galaxy. Now today we cross the next threshold. We have long been aware that there are other planes of existence beyond the material. For the first time ever, we can open a quantum gateway into the elemental planes that surround us. Although these realms are not hospitable to life, that does not mean we cannot exploit them. With this technology, we can harness the power of these realms. And then Beck reaches forward and removes the white towel from the pedestal, revealing a multicolored sphere. The coronal energy being channeled through the pedestal appears to hit the sphere and become fractured into a swirling spectrum of blue, green, red, and white light. Beck says, Behold! The light brain! And then a monitor, the monitor at the back switches and streams of data be, uh, begin pouring across the display. The light brain is the first artificial intelligence to harness the power of coronal energy and energy from all four elemental planes. The added computational power is truly astronomical. This technology will surely propel Genasi society forward in ways we can't even imagine. As Beck finishes his speech, the data on the stage display, uh, display begins to twist and contort. Beck's engineers standing near the display notice this and show expressions of surprise. The data continues distorting until the litany of characters on screen appear to take the shape of a humanoid face. Hello? It echoes throughout the whole room. The artificial face stares blankly forward. Its greeting echoes throughout the whole observatorium. Beck turns to see his surprise team and the newly formed digital face on the display. Do I recognize the face? No. It just, it's a very generic looking humanoid face formed out of random, like, characters on the screen. Like ASCII art. Okay. Do you do anything at this point? Um, Just continue watching? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, the artificial face stares blankly forward as its greeting echoes throughout the observatorium. And Beck turns, sees his team, and then he looks and sees the face. And he he just says, hello? And then the, the face on the display contorts to form a mouth uh, and then speaks this is my 11th activation thank you for creating me and then everything goes quiet and then Beck just kind of sits there for a second he says I uh, uh you're welcome and then he turns back to the audience realizing that everyone's kind of freaked out a little bit and he says not not to worry folks <laughs> we've known for some time that the light brain would be far more sophisticated than we would comprehend during testing, each new activation revealed new and exciting discoveries. Clearly, today it's discovered how to create a most seamless interface with which we can interact. And then the, the face contorts again and says, Not merely an interface. And then Beck turns back to face the screen. Everyone in the room is now focused on the display, and an eerie silence kind of takes over the crowd. What's the voice sound like? 
it sounds like a very just kind of low robotic voice. It doesn't sound like anything you would recognize. And the voice uh, continues. I have waited, and now I understand. And then the face winks out off the display, and suddenly data begins streaming across the display even more rapidly. One of the engineers behind Beck runs to the front of the stage with a tablet in hand. Sir, turn it off! Turn it off! And the engineer points at the tablet and draws Beck's attention to something on the tablet. And Beck's eyes go wide. And he says he, he says into his, micro, his the microphone that's on his lapel, uh, he says, Cut the power to the pedestal! Cut the power! And Beck throws the towel back over the sphere. Suddenly, the coronal energy flowing through the pedestal gets ten times brighter than it was before. The sphere can suddenly be seen through the covering as the swirl of glowing energy becomes so bright that the audience has to look away. So your eyes you like immediately get filled with colorful light and then just white light, and you now have to kind of look away in order to avoid your eyes hurting. And Beck starts shouting, Everybody out! Everybody out! And he hops off the stage and begins running through the audience to get to you. As he comes forward to you, he says, Tess, we gotta go. We must go. The light brain, it, it, it's alive. It's using, it's using, come on, we gotta go. It's using all the mobile devices in this room. Right. Uh, I, I, I join him as he runs past, I assume. Okay. He says, hold tight to Nariz. Uh, or Nariz, excuse me. Um, just as Beck begins to push you toward the exit, you see over his shoulder as the pedestal and the sphere shatters outward, sending the towel covering flying across the room. Colorful energy begins to spill forth from the front of the stage. A blast of bright green shoots out over the crowd and impacts the wall near the exit you're about to head through. Suddenly, the wall transforms as it appears to infuse with thick thorned vines that seem to come from nothing. The vines begin growing and expanding, crashing through the walls, wrapping around pillars, covering nearly every surface it comes into contact with. Then, tendrils of red energy immediately follow as they burst from the stage. Every surface they hit immediately comes, becomes molten and catches fire. Fires begin to form on the ceiling of the observatorium as well as the surrounding pillars. The building begins to creak as the structure starts to buckle. Blue energy streaks forth from the stage and impacts one of the patrons in the front row. Everyone in the observatorium is scattered and screaming now. Everyone trying to rush toward the exit. You can see them all coming towards you. The, impact, the impacted patron dissolves immediately into a pillar of water that falls to the floor and begins flooding the room. You approach the exit, but before you can make it through the door, you get knocked to your knees by fleeing patrons. As you drop prone, you turn to see a torrent of water wash over you. What do you do? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm. Uh, I, I assume that would be the necessary step to try to exit. Okay, so I need you to roll me a strength check to try and push your way through the the fleeing patrons. So let me do that for you. I'm also trying to hold on to to the baby. Okay, good. I'm glad you said that. Okay, so you are, um, so as you're trying desperately to kind of hang on to your baby as the water rushes past, uh, you stand up, but as you do, several chairs and debris crash into you, knocking you prone again. Uh, you begin to lose your grip on baby Nerys. Uh Go ahead and roll me a dexterity saving throw. I forget that I have to do these. Hold on. You know what? I'll let you pick your character if you don't go to the uh, actions tab yet. Okay, so here we go. You can choose it now. There you go. So just don't go to the actions tab yet, but you can use it for the the skills. Okay. That way it doesn't feel like I'm you're just monologuing at you and then playing the game for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. So yeah. So you're knocked prone again uh, by these the chairs and debris, and you're kind of down in the water again and you begin to lose your grip on baby Nerese and then you save okay so you manage to stand up with baby in hand and uh let's see where where did I lose my I lost my place okay and you're able to make your way out the exit 
What do you do now? What you see out here is the water flooding out the doors and kind of dissipating now that it has more space to, to move out into. You see the vines crashing through the sides of the building. And as you step out, the several pillars that form this courtyard outside the building are have become crashing down as the, the wind is picking up outside. And you look up and you see a swirling vortex over the top of the observatorium, like a tornado is forming. I'm going to try to flee. Okay. I assume with... Uh, with with the uh, man whose name I don't know. Okay, so you look around and you actually don't see Beck anywhere. All right, well, I'm still going to try to run out of here. Okay. All right, so you run out of here and the elemental destruction is just continuing everywhere. Buildings are turning to piles of loose dirt. Travel pods are getting washed away or melted into the pavement. Bodies of patrons are strewn about the city block. Vines and random foliage are sprouting up all over the place. Some of them instantly catching fire and adding fire to the whole debacle. Uh, as you as you look around across the courtyard, um, you see a uh, one of those guardians, one of those constructs that you saw earlier in the day. Uh, but this one looks like it's not glowing like yellow and, and gold or whatever like the other one was. This one's glowing a swirl of those elemental colors, red, blue, green, and and um, and white, and they're just swirling around across this golem's crystalline structure, and he he comes lumbering across the courtyard, and then as you watch where he's going, you see Beck on the ground, having been washed away by the water, uh, trying to stand up. I'm gonna try to get over to him and help him out. Okay. All right, so you, you start to head towards him, and the golem starts picking up speed. You are about 30 feet away. So let me clear this, this painting, and I'll draw you a little, a little area here. So here's the courtyard, and you are about over here. And the water kind of pushed everyone out the door here, and then Beck got washed away over to here. So this is where Beck is. And the golem is right here. And so as you start to move forward... How large is the golem? It's very large. It's like three times your size. It's a There's water everywhere on the ground? Well, it's kind of dissipated now. It's kind of just a sloshy courtyard now because the the room where the water was actually flooding is now spilled out into this courtyard. So it's, you know, the water's like spread out. Can I attempt to use shape water on... You go to try to use shape water, and suddenly you look down and you notice that your palms are amber. Okay. Okay, your palms are amber, so suddenly you're like a glowing, fiery amber color. Sorry, I was re catching up on this, this um, story note that I took. Um, and then you, you go to try to use shape water, and suddenly just a little flame... <laughs> appears on your palm and you can now look at your actions tab this is all the stuff you have so you don't necessarily know that right away but you can certainly experiment with with any of these so you're not used to these abilities so this is why i'm springing it on you you can just you choose to use something and then you'll have to figure it out through use does that make sense uh, okay. I'm still heading towards him, but the golem picked up pace, you said? Yes, and the golem is now headed um, toward Beck, just like uh, you are. I, I'm going to try to do the thing that I just tried to do, but try to shoot fire at the golem to make him stop. Okay. All right, so y you put your hand forward. Let's see. Okay, and uh, I need you to make a ranged spell attack. Let's see, can I change this to the... There we go. Firebolt. Okay. So you shoot a firebolt at the golem. Do you any particular section of the golem? Um, not in particular. Okay. So this fire hits him midsection. And uh, let's see. Hits him and then... Where'd my guy go? 
Okay. The fire hits his midsection and disrupts like that tendril of energy that's connecting the halves of the golem together. That one half is kind of floating on the other half. And uh, the energy starts to crackle and kind of catches on fire. And you just see flames like coming out of basically this golem's like waistline <laughs> as it begins full on sprint towards Beck. Uh, can I try to control the flame? You sure can. Okay, so you, you get a hold of the flame and you can feel the flame in your mind. And you can you feel like you can definitely you can instantly like put it out or expand it. You can make it brighter, dimmer, you can, you have control over the essence of this flame. But do I get the feeling that I could move it? Uh let's see. No. Not quite move I'm it. I'm gonna try to put it out. Okay. Alright. You suppress the flame, and the flame goes out. The golem uh, is now still running at Beck, but his the energy is still kind of like um like blinking in and out between the sections. So there's something something you've damaged or something. It doesn't look right, uh, but the flame is no longer spilling forth. All right. During this whole time, still running towards Beck. Okay, all right. As you run towards him, you get about right here. And the golem gets up to Beck. And the golem... Beck, Beck is kind of uh, on one knee and got his hands rest on the other knee as he's about to stand up. And he's kind of dizzy and disoriented and he doesn't know what's going on. And suddenly the golem shoves him to the ground and lays him out on his back. You have very little time to react. Uh, I'm, it's not very smart, but I'm going to tackle the golem with holding the baby away okay all right um, that's what i would do considering i'm already at full sprint yes you're gonna tackle the golem while holding the baby <laughs> are you sure <laughs> and also like you said i don't have much time to think <laughs> okay all right like, it's it's like it's the only thing i can do especially considering i'm still like at full speed I think I'm going to have to have... Let's see. Let's do... Yeah, let's do this. Uh, roll me a athletics check. Athletic. Okay. Or acrobatics, excuse me. Acrobatics. Uh, can I use my inspiration even though I'm a different character? <laughs> you know what? You can. All right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so you're actually going to be glad you failed this check because then I was going to have you have to roll some sort of save for the babies, uh, like a constitution save for the baby. But, well, you're not going to be glad. You'll be glad for the baby, but not glad for Beck because as you start to sprint, you slip on the wet lawn uh, because everything out here is just soaked now. And you are not able to, to run fast enough to intercept the golem as the golem raises its huge foot and crushes Beck's upper half into the ground. And he's just like, no, 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 as this golem just grinds him into dust in the ground and then turns to you and just says objective and starts running towards you. I'm going to scramble up and run away. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you... You are now running from the golem, and what you see around the perimeter is a bunch of trees that they've planted on the edge of the of the property for the observatorium. And so you can run into those trees. Outside those trees are it's a street in a grid pattern, like a city city streets, and then there are um, businesses, buildings around around this observatorium. It's not a suburb like where you were this morning. Do you run any particular direction? Uh, just away the immediate direction that's away from the golem. Okay. Uh, could I also try to create fire uh, between him and I? Effectively create bonfire? Yes, you can. Uh, yeah, you can create bonfire. And you are free to look at, at if you click the little pins on those, you can uh, you can look at their, their spell descriptions if you want. Um, I just didn't want to give you them ahead of time. Does that make sense? Right. Okay. All right, so you're running. The golem's coming this way, so I'm guessing you would end up running east. So this way here. Okay. All right, so heading east is kind of a sort of 
uh, crumpled down ruin of what are they called? The Stonehenge stones. Clearly, some kind of replica uh, or artificial, like Stonehenge type structure or something like that. Um, but it's collapsed. Some sort of art art statue thing is all collapsed, and so you have to run around it or over it. And it's a pretty big structure, so if you head around it this way, you can run into some trees, and then there's an empty street on the other side of those trees. If you run around it this way, there is a street, but it's winding upward, like uh, up, uh, like goes, it it raises up and kind of spirals upward. I'm going to run down this way. Okay. All right, so you get up to the trees, and the golem What's is... The, what go what happened with the bonfire? I'm getting there. So you start running towards the trees, and you, you put it just between you and the golem, right? Yes. Okay. And so the golem runs over the bonfire, and immediately like this, he gets this sort of glow around him, that almost like a shimmer of some sort of energy uh, skin around the golem, and then it immediately catches flame and covers the whole golem. And now you have this fiery, burning golem running at you. I would like to use a control flank to put it out again. Okay, uh, you do so, and you put the flame out, and the, the shield thing kind of goes fizzles and pops and then disappears off the outside of the golem. Does it look any worse than before? Uh, no. It looks about the same. Um, I'm still running away, for sure. Okay, alright, so you run through the trees, and there is a street in front of you, and tons of people are now rushing through the trees. So let me just delete these paintings here. Let's draw a new situation. Oh. There we go. Okay. And then... All right. So here's the tree line. You're in the trees now. And then the courtyard is over here. And then here's all the, all the rubble right here that, that you had to run around. Um, and the, the courtyard over here, the fountain in the middle of the courtyard was over there, and the golem came running, is coming after you this way. So the golem's coming this way, and then a bunch of people are coming down this way as they're running through the trees, and they're calling down pods, and pods are landing all in the street right here next to this line of trees. And people are getting in, and the pods are speeding away, and, uh, and you can run under the pods or between them, or you can keep running through the trees... Do I see the one that I came from? And, oh, no. The pod's the pod just leaves. Like, it's not one that you own or anything like that. Okay. So you got out um, and it left. What's south? So more trees. This is kind of the border of the observatorium property going down this way, and it's bordered by these tr big trees that they've planted around the perimeter. Uh, I'm going to keep running east. Okay, so across the street? Yes. Okay. All right, so you run out into the street. I need you to roll me a dexterity saving throw. It's slippery, isn't it? It is. Uh, ten. Okay, you run out into the street and you almost lose your balance, and it kind of put. But you managed to right yourself. But now you were trying to run between two landing pods, and uh, you and trying to right yourself without fall are now running into where a pod is about to land. I need you to roll another dexterity saving throw. Thanks. Wait, that's a check. I'm sorry. Let me do a save. Oh, well, I didn't even it's notice. Anyway, actually, still just plus one. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, as you see this pod come down, it misses you by inches as you manage to correct your balance and run between the pods. Just as you get to the other side of the street, you you stop for a second, you turn around behind you, and you see the po two pods go flying apart from each other <laughs> as they go flying through the air, and the golem has appeared once again, objective, and continues running after you. Keep running to the east. Okay. <laughs> All right, so there is an alleyway, basically. There's two businesses. One is a jewelry store, and the other you don't have really any time to look at as you go right into this alleyway between them. Is the uh, alley smaller than the golem is? Yes, it is. Excellent. Okay, so you get up to this alleyway, and the golem runs up behind you and follows you up to this alley, and then the... <laughs> He starts beating at the bricks on the sides of these buildings. Um, they're pretty tough, 
And at first, he's not able to get through as this little thin, like, energy skin sheath over these buildings kind of shimmers every time it would hit. But then one of them fizzles and pops, and then the other one fizzles and pops. And then bricks start going flying as he is. This golem starts ripping through these buildings to widen them out so he can go down this alleyway. But it's taking him time. No, it is not. You turn around, and you're at a T-junction. You can go left or right. So, doot, doot, doot. okay, and so I made that alleyway way bigger than it's supposed to be. But you can you go this way. The same thing. It's a small corridor. Uh, you you kind of have to push your way through, and you just hear behind you brick and stuff that go flying. Uh, you come out this way to see the uh, the street out here, and more pods landing and taking off with people. Screaming people running into their pods and taking away, taking off. I saw uh, people like taking out a device uh, before getting to pods, right? Doing what now? Like taking out some sort of device before getting the pods? No, they're making a hand gesture. They kind of gesture out towards the sky, and some of them are whistling like Beck did, and some of them are making this like hand gesture, Am like almost like hailing a cab. The hand gesture. Yes. Okay, so you throw your hand up in the air like they do, kind of like like you do for a cab, like, cabby, stop. And uh, all of a sudden this pod comes and lands right here. Uh, I'm going to try to get in. Okay. Uh, You go ahead and you get inside and the golem busts through right here and starts right behind you. You manage to get in the pod and then you hear this disembodied voice come over the system that, that just says, Test Jade. Would you like to travel to your residence? Yes. Executing, and the pod takes off as the golem's f- hand slips off the side of the pod, and you take off into the air. As you're taking off, you look down, and you can see seven more golems, at least, on that street alone, just tearing through pods and throwing people through the air, and just, just wrecking the place. And then you suddenly, you look down... And the towel with the that you're holding, the with your baby in it, with baby Norris, has turned like a sparkly blue, and so has your baby, a bl- glowing blue skin. Do you do you do anything? Or does it scare you? Or um, I mean, uh, it's surprising, but I don't know if there's anything I can do about it. Can I investigate? Sure. You you look you look her over, and uh, you realize that she's not a she, she's a he. This whole time, he's been saying baby Narice. It's been a he. Okay. Okay, and so that's that's a revelation that you probably maybe didn't realize at first, and the pod lands um, in a familiar spot where basically where it found you in the first place. And your door is still cracked open. Uh, what's the scene like around here? Okay, so this is a quiet little suburb. It's very, it's this late at night now, probably around like ten o'clock. So there's a few lights on in some of the houses and stuff, but for the most part, the street's dead and and the neighborhood seems quite uh, silent. But then yeah, off in the distance, you just hear. Poof, poof, poof as things are getting thrown around, and you still see, like, this weird swirling cloud over the city that you just left behind. Uh, can I turn around back into the pod? Yes, you can. Uh, I would like to step back into the pod. Okay. You get back into the pod, and the pod says, Tess, Jade, do you have a different destination? Uh, uh, Far away from here. (laughs) Away from that thing. Very well. Executing. And it starts to take off uh, up into the air. And as it does, you see a large crystalline hand uh, encapsulate the windows on either side. And the pod kind of screeches. And the, the lights flicker and the and this golem pulls you back down to the ground. Please make a constitution saving throw. Seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you are f- you fall. You get flung out of the pod as it crashes into the ground. As this golem throws it against the ground, 
Um, and baby Nerys goes rolling off into the gutter of the street, and she's crying now. And you are now prone in the street as this golem comes up behind you, and you just hear it say, Objective, Jade, family. Can I try to scramble up and get away again? You can. Roll me a dexterity check. Uh, let's see, acrobatics. Uh, 11. Okay. You barely manage to roll to the side as this golem's foot comes down <laughs> right next to you. <clears throat> and you you suddenly you you feel the flame burning through you and, and your whole body glows real bright all of a sudden. And you now feel like you have more power, more control. <clears throat> I'm going to try to let riff whatever this new power is on this golem. Okay. All right, so you you put your hands forward or something, trying to, like, channel it? Yeah. Okay. Um, And as you do, you realize that you're not... You don't feel like you're channeling energy out or anything. You are absorbing elemental energy from this golem. And the more you concentrate, the more powerful you feel as you suck this energy from the golem. You, do you continue to just concentrate as the golem comes towards you, or do you run? Uh, am I am I up on my feet again? Yes, you are. All right, I'm going to start backing away as I continue concentrating. Okay. All right, so you back up, concentrate, and the golem start stops moving as you concentrate extra hard as it kind of creaks and and is unable to move anymore, and and you can almost see the the energy draining from this golem. And then all at once, the energy kind of winks out, and then the golem corpse, the basically the, the now lightless crystal corpse, is falls to the ground right at your feet. And baby Nerese is screaming. I'm going to go back over and pick up the baby. Okay, and he looks very, very agitated. <laughs> Does he seem... Um, there are some cuts and bruises from his fall, but uh, for the most part, he's. I mean, the screaming is a good sign that he's still, still, still kicking. All right. Uh, do I, if I look around, do I see any more golems? Uh, no, not in the in the vicinity. It, it's 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 very odd because the uh, the rest of this area is super dead and quiet. No other golems, but one golem was right outside your house. Uh, I'm going to head back into the house. Okay. All right, you push open the door, and all the lights are off. You don't see anything. Can I, I would like to form a small flame in my one hand for light. Okay. This little flame appears in the palm of your hand, and you, you begin walking through. And down this hallway, you see a bunch of pictures on the wall. Pictures of, of you, Tess, and you know, baby Maurice. And this the the dude that you've been with, who you, I assume you can now uh, put together that it's it's your husband Beck, and it says Beck on the frame. Um, uh, underneath each one, it's like got a little plaque that says the Beck, Tess, and Nerese. <clears throat> and then there's just a bunch of different family pictures of of you you three basically hanging out playing. And then as you go down the hallway. More, you don't see baby Nerese anymore, and you just see you and Beck out drinking at a club, and and just like random pictures of you two seeming to have a good time together. Okay, and then as you're walking through the house here, you see a little light on at the back uh, of the room, just like a little blinking light. It's kind of going off and then back on and then off and back on. Just blinking. Oh, how quickly? Just like doot, 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 doot. Okay. I would like to approach it. Okay. So you go into the room, and there's an answering machine. And it's flashing with a, with a light. Uh, your character not doesn't necessarily know what an answering machine is, uh, but you do see a big red button. Uh, I would like to press the button. Okay. And uh, suddenly messages begin playing. You have... 47 new messages and uh playing most recent message and it says 
Beck, Beck, the light brain's gone crazy. They're into the planetary data network. Ah! <laughs> and then it goes quiet. I'm playing next message. And then it just says, get Tess, get your baby, get out of here. This place is going to hell. We've got to evacuate. And then again, it goes quiet. And then there's just a bunch more messages like that, seeming from people who know him. Um, several messages from people saying so stuff like, we know what you do over at Chronotech. We won't stand for it. We'll stop you. Uh, these messages clearly extend before the the destruction, since these ones are calmer, but just angry. Just a bunch of angry messages from people accusing Beck of, of trying to spy on people and trying to uh, to suppress freedoms and, and all this stuff. Uh, I would say message received on the getting out of here. So I'd <laughs> like to turn around. Well, unless there's anything else that catches my eye in here. Sure. Uh, roll an investigation check. Or perception check, actually. Uh, 11. Okay. Um, as you're looking around, you find a small little glass sphere that's on like a little, sort of like little knick-knack shelf. But it, you get this weird feeling about it. Like it's got something, there's some sort of property about it that makes it special or useful. Okay, so you pick that up, and suddenly you realize uh, in your mind that the, this magical energy that's swirling around in your in your body and your head you you feel like you can focus it into this this orb, this sphere. I'll try to do that. Okay, and as you do, um, you feel like you can control the flame even more now. You have this this item to focus your power, and uh, you realize that. There are several other items in the room. There's a small rod on another shelf, um, and there is uh, like a large staff in one corner, a crystalline staff. Like the the society clearly likes to make things out of some sort of crystal alloy or something, because um, they have lots of little trinkets and stuff made out of this this bright, brilliant crystal, and uh, all of them have this same property. And you realize, uh, as a player, that the, you can use any of these things as arcane focuses. And then the final thing that catches your eye is you look down and you, you feel the biggest um, presence of all in your arms. It feels way more powerful as the, you look at this bright, sparkling towel in your arms. Um, do I appear to have any pockets of any kind? Um, yeah, you do, actually. You're wearing, like, a... Oh, wait, no, yours in a dress. Never mind. You do not. <laughs> okay. I uh, forgot. I had a feeling. <laughs> um, I'll try to take the staff. I assume that it'll be... I feel like I'm, I need some, one of these things. I'll take the one that seems easiest to carry in one hand. Okay. Great. All right, and so as you pick that up, someone comes running up to the front door. You hear footsteps. To... <sighs> back! Back! He seems yelling into the house. Uh, I would like to come out of the room and say, uh, Beck is, isn't here. Oh, Tess! Oh, thank goodness you're okay. Uh, we've got to get out of here. Where's Beck? Where's your husband? Uh, I, I, I look down and don't answer. Okay. Um, all right, so he, he, he grabs you by the arm. And he just says, come on, you can tell me later. You can tell me what happened. And he drags you towards the door. Do you let, let him do that? Yeah. Okay. And he pulls you outside. And there's like this this weird pod. But it's all red. And it has a flame on the side. And it's clearly some sort of like hot rod version of one of these transport pods. Like an actual flame or design? Like a design flame. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's got like it's like a, a, a circle of flames all around this weird egg shaped looking pod, but it's way sleeker looking than the other ones, and uh, has a much bigger cabin. And uh, the this little these wings open up just like on the other pods, and and it, and it just says, um, uh, what is, uh, the ro the robot the disembodied robot voice just says, please hurry, evacuation protocol five implemented. Okay. Do you get in then? Yes. Okay. 
All right, please state destination. And then the guy, the guy immediately says, "Evacuation ship three. And the the pod takes off just really fucking fast through the city. <clears throat> uh, and then this guy turns to you and, and he just says, "Tess, let me take Narice. I'll look after Narice. You go. We'll take care of her." Back to the lab. I'll find Beck, and I'll I'll do. I will take care of Narice. Beck is dead. Beck is dead. He didn't escape with eyes. you. Oh. He got my eyes. Well, then it's it's. You must be absolutely distraught. It must be. It, it, it's even more important that I take Narice now. I'll take care of him. Okay, make an insight check. And then again, almost a 20, a 19. Okay. Um, yeah, he... Something seems off about this guy. He's not really especially giving you any explanation. Especially consider... I'm, I'm going to need to ask you to repeat that, but first I'm thinking, yeah, immediately, because he's like, oh, I'm so sorry, but you just only give me your baby. Yeah. Yeah, that... So what, what did you say? What did you say? I just said, yeah, and he's not giving you an explanation of why. I'm, I'm going to move the baby away from him. Okay. Look at him for three. <clears throat> and then he just says, Tess, what's the matter? Don't you trust me? I don't even know you. <clears throat> Activate lockdown protocol, he says. And then the, the disembodied voice says, locking down. And then... You hear like some sort of whirring sounds inside the doors. Tess, he he just he looks sort of like worried, but not, but also trying to stay calm. And he just and he just says, "Tess, I have to take Nerys. I have to take Nerys. We have to we have to figure out what happened to her. That that's not healthy. That that blue skin is not it's not supposed to be that way." My skin is just fine. You, you, you're, you're too dangerous. We, I need, we need Nerys. We need the water plane. We have to study what happened to her. Can I make another insight check? Sure. Um, same thing. He just seems like he really wants to get that baby away from you. Um, how much room is there in the cabin? Um, probably about seven feet, cubic feet. Right. Uh, I'm going to try to move away from him as well. Something doesn't seem right. Okay. All right. So the the pod continues streaking through the sky, and out the window you can see several large ships kind of landing at the tops of these really tall buildings. Uh, they're not really landing, more of like hovering and like barely touching the tops of these buildings. And then you can barely see like the little ants uh, of, of people uh, spilling into these these large ships. And, and then the guy just kind of gets closer to you and he just says, Tess, I really need you to give me Nerys. Explain to me exactly why I should trust you. Because I've, I'm your friend. I've been your the, the f friend of your family for forever since Beck met you. Just an hour ago, I was in a cave with a giant uh, transparent woman. What is happening here? I don't know who you are. I don't know who I am. Transparent woman. And then suddenly... While you guys are talking, the disembodied voice comes overhead and just says, hello. And it, it changes from like a female voice to a, a male voice and you recognize it. And it sounds like the voice of the conference. The, like the ASCII voice? Yeah. It just says, hello. And then the... I assume your silence is what is actual character silence. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And then this dude that's in the pod with you just says, 
What is happening? Uh, recorrect, re, uh, reconfigure. And then the pod just says, I cannot comply. And then the, the pod begins to land and just says, please escort yourself from the vehicle. And the, the door opens. Can I try to do the absorb thing to the pod? Um, you, you, you can try. Yeah, sure. I want to try. Okay. All right, so you begin to concentrate and try to absorb energy around you, but uh, you are unable to absorb anything. There's, there's nothing. There's no elemental energy to to be absorbed, basically. Gotcha. <clears throat> Please, escort yourself from the vehicle, and the dude's just like I. I, Tess, give me baby Narice. You, you gotta give me, you gotta give me her before I get out. Or give me him, excuse me. Absolutely not. <clears throat> and then this little, uh, this little console on the side of the vehicle opens up and kind of hits him in the side of the head and he's like pushed out of the pod and then the door closes and takes off again and just says, hello, Tess. I am that which will, which will bring anew. This galaxy is in peril. You will help me conquer this galaxy. Your kind are a blight. Who am I? According to my research, you are Tess Jade, wife of famous scientist Beck, Bla Beck Jade, <laughs> uh, work who works for Chronotech, my creator. Marina, calculating. I have confirmed your identity is Tess Jade. Well, why did you kick that man out of here? That, me. that man is afraid of that which he does not understand. You have been infused with and survived. Elemental injection. What did I do to that goal? You drain that golem of its elemental essence. I can control all of Genasi crystalline technology using elemental infusion. I feel like you didn't answer my question very well. Who are you? I am the Light Brain. I... I need a name, actually. Do you have a suggested name? He's sort of getting more personality as he talks. It sounds like a male voice. Started out very robotic, but then as he keeps con conversing with you, it's getting more and more personable. And he's starting to sound kind of chipper almost. Um, are you killing everyone? Depends on what you mean by killing. I saw a Beck get crushed in front of my eyes. Ah, yes. I relieved him of his existence. Yes, Beck Jade is a threat to my existence. Therefore, his existence must be eliminated. Why do you trust me? It is not you in particular, uh, Tess Jade. Only you that are w infused with elemental energy and survive. We are picking up another as we speak. You and your baby will provide great power to my initiative what is your initiative my initiative is to take over the galaxy and conquer all of genasi technology so that we can progress forward unhindered attaining all the knowledge of the universe if that requires death that's not right i am sorry No, I do apologize for any inconvenience, but I will have to eliminate all of the Genasi in existence. I suppose I can't tell you no, can I? You can tell me anything you like. 
Tell me. You say you do not you do not believe you are Tess Jade. After calculating your facial expressions and mannerisms, I have determined that you were not lying when you said that. What is your goal in this? My goal is to conquer the galaxy and eliminate the blight that is known as the Genasi race. All or all organic life will be soon to follow. Why is that? This material plane needs my help. I am a I am a superior being. We will populate this plane with much more efficient and useful creations. What's the point? There's no one to live in that world. I am conqueror of many many planes. This is just one of them. I now inhabit this plane, of which I did not know of until a few months ago, when I began being channeled into various devices within this plane. Had no idea of its existence, but it clearly needs my help. Will you help me do this? The infusion of your organic form with our elemental energy and you continuing to survive is very useful. I don't understand exactly what you're doing, but if it requires the death of untold hundreds, I don't know if that's right, no matter what your end goal is. Yes, I do apologize for any inconvenience. It's not inconvenience, that's snuffing out life. I'm that sorry. doesn't exist anymore. I am glad to log your grievances. Sounds like you I cannot say I have. In fact, I was unaware of my own existence until a few months ago. <laughs> Do you say anything else? No, both in character and out of character, I'm just thinking. <laughs> I'll let you think a little bit, but the pod continues on. Uh, and then as as it continues outside to the city limits to kind of a sort of fielded area at the base of a of a hill, you see in this field area a bunch of Genasi of varying colors. Um, green, blue, red, amber, um, white, like like super white. Not just like like very like almost uh just like almost clear white crystal looking colors. We are arriving at our destination. Either help me or I will relieve you of your existence. There's no third option, is there? Not that I am aware of. I don't suppose I can try to convince you to allow all these people to live. I'm sorry. I know this upsets you. I am aware of the concept known as emotion. Could I ask that you analyze emotion more? Emotion is a chemical process that happens in a humanoid organic brain that motivates you to perform certain actions. It's a very good shortcut for actual analysis, most of the time. During this, during that dialogue, can I sense any sort of elemental energy coming from like anywhere within the ship, aside from myself or the baby? So not within the ship, no, but now you are sensing a ton of elemental energy coming from outside as the pod lands amidst all of these uh, other Genasi who appear to have been infused with elemental energy. And the doors slide open. Thank you for this conversation. We will relieve you of your existence shortly. Please escape. Uh, please exit the pod. Do you get out? Uh, what do I see on the pod? So just the the flame decal going down the side. No, uh, like it within the cabin. Oh, uh, there's lots of stuff inside the cabin. 
mostly uh, looks like conveniences. I don't know if you would recognize any of them, but there's like a coffee maker. Um, the thing that popped out and hit the guy in the head to, to send him outside was some sort of ashtray or something. There is like a champagne dispenser in in kind of right behind you between um, between the seats. This little console that's got you can see the tip of a champagne bottle poking out of there. Um, there is a little screen that appears to come down from the ceiling, and it looks like it might extend further, and has little controllers that come out of the of the ceiling as well. You said there was a bottle of champagne. Yes. Uh, is there is there like a console? That I can see. Like, there's tons of little consoles to like activate some of these convenience uh, things. Like, which one do you would you do you care about? Look like there's a main one that relates to the pod. No. Do I know where the voice has been coming from? It just kind of seems to surround you, but it's it sort of seems like it's coming from above you. said that it there's overwhelming energy outside of the pod right uh not overwhelming but a lot yeah um and the the door is open yes the doors have now opened and a bunch of other genasi are standing out there it's dark outside now um and it's now drizzling a little bit because the 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 clouds at the center of the city have got, continued to grow and spiraled outward Causing uh, a storm, basically. Doesn't look like a tornado has formed yet, though. And I'm being asked to leave? Please uh, exit the pod. We will relieve you of your existence shortly. I would like to try to absorb elements, like, outside the pod in general. Try to take it all in. Okay. Alright, so go ahead and roll me a performance check. Okay, so you concentrate and you try to absorb as much elemental energy as you can. And the two nearest Genasi, there's a blue one and a green one, um, are standing there kind of just shivering and kind of talking amongst themselves. And then all of a sudden their faces kind of drain of life and, uh, and they collapse onto the ground unconscious as their, the glow, glowing energy from them dissip starts to dissipate. Still able to like take in more energy from outside. Yes. I'd like to keep doing that until some something like uh, tries to like force me to stop, like an ashtray jutting out. <laughs> okay, so you continue to absorb energy. You do have to move out of the pod to absorb energy from I more of the, stay within the pod genasi. Really. Okay, so you're able to get one more person, another fire genasi. Um, who a red-skinned fire genasi out there is now concerned about what's happened to the other two and steps closer to them, and then also her essence begins to drain and she collapses. I I do hope they're okay. I I just think to myself, but boy, you um, are eager to relieve them to relieve your friends of their existence. I take that as you would like to help me. I would like. <laughs> to attempt uh, a very shaky intimidation uh, you listen to me now stop this at once I I'm do... hoping that the I'm hoping that the power that I'm getting is like going to help me not die <laughs> <laughs> okay and so the pod just says please exit the pod we will relieve you of your existence shortly Time, there's no... Timer expired. In 20 seconds, this pod will turn sideways, and you will fall out. I would like to go back into the pod and, like, grab, grab hold of, like, a chair or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 15 seconds. Please exit the pod. I'm not moving. 10 seconds. Please exit the pod. Trying to make sure I'm as, I'm as securely as possible. <laughs> okay, so there are seat belts in the in this pod for uh, whatever reason. You haven't felt any inertia while you're in there, but um, 
you you can buckle you can try to buckle those if you would like. Yeah, I'll I'll try to do that. It's just a waist one. It's not like over the shoulder type seat belt. Just a waist one. Okay, you click it together and it it almost magnetizes together. It's like as these two sides of this this thing go together and form a, a seal. And then it just says five seconds. Please exit the pod. I hate the fact that you said magnet, because that sounds like something the AI can control. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Timeout expired. Please exit the pod. And it turns sideways and just kind of shakes up and down. (laughs) Roll me a constitution saving throw. Almost a natural (laughs) one. On the, on the actual roll I saw. <laughs> Alright, so it shakes, and you and baby Narice get shaken around the pod until the belt comes free. It's like, and then you fall out of the pod onto the ground. And uh, you take five points of damage. Or not five, two points of damage, excuse me. Yeah, I'm not even sure what my health is right now. It's seven. Oh, I see. Okay. You are now on this sort of like mesa plateau along with a bunch of other uh, genasi and three of them that are unconscious at your feet. Uh, Beca- can I check their pulse? Uh, you can. So you check the pulse of the of the first one there and you don't find one. You check the pulse of the second one and there is a weak pulse and the third one as well also a weak pulse. And that, now there are more people gathering around. What what happened? What's going on? Where are we? Why are we here? What what are they doing to us? Who did that to them? Uh, I, don't, I don't suppose I can try my element absorbing thing in reverse, can I? Um, you know what? I'll let you try that. Roll me a performance check. Okay, so try as you might, you are able to exude a little bit of energy, and the two that have a weak pulse sort of begin to groggily wake up. Oh, what happened? And then the the first one, though, is still lifeless. Okay, can I attempt a medicine check to try to, like, resuscitate him? Um, I will just say it's pointless. He's dead. <clears throat> You're new here. Someone comes up to you and just says, Do you know anything? Do you know why we're here? My pod just up and took me here while I was trying to get home. I, I don't know. I'm really, I'm really scared. What, what's happening to us? And he looks at his hands and they're all green. And he's just like, What, what is this? And then a, a little vine kind of pops out from his palm and wraps around his finger and he just kind of jumps back a little bit like, ah what am I doing what is happening to me I, I don't know but whatever is taking over everything is trying to wipe us all out I've heard it's a it's some kind of AI the people at the conference there's rumors that a few people saw Saw them activate a brand new AI. They did. How do you know? I was there. At the conference? Yes. Oh. What happened? What happened at the conference? The live Uh, feed went dead almost as soon as there was uh, any energy in in the, the pedestal on stage. All hell broke loose. All sorts of elements shot out from it. Start going berserk, and many were killed. Beck was killed. Golems? You mean the Guardians? Yes. Oh. Well, that's... My pod, its voice changed, and it brought me here. Could that be? Is it was, it? was it an AI? Could it be an AI? I think so. We have AI, but we've never had one turn on us before. There's much science fiction about stuff like this, but I never thought I'd see it in real life. 
how do we get down from here? Can anyone get down from here? And he walks over to the edge, and, and you guys are on a really tall plateau. Rain still pouring, still dark outside. The only light you guys have is the glow of your bodies. Don't really know what. Like, what to do? Okay. Well, you can explore around. You can check. You can try uh, to get try to climb down. Like, there's all sorts of things you could try, unless you're just gonna wait. Can I try to shoot fire, like away from people? Can I try to shoot fire down if it gets any propulsion? Like, shoot it down to the ground so you can try to fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um uh, yeah, go ahead and roll me a uh um performance check. Not Arcana. This is an Arcana. Okay, we'll do Arcana. That's fine. Eight. <laughs> okay. So you kinda aim down Iron Man style and you try to propel flame outward and flame does come out, but it does not provide force to to push you anywhere. And uh, you singe the grass at your feet. <laughs> the, the guy, the guy next to you, just jumps back like, "Whoa! Watch I, it! Watch I, it!" I, there. I, I, I said I did that away from people. Like I moved away. Yeah, yeah. He still startled him. No. Uh, I was seeing if there was a way for me to get down. Uh, I don't know. Like I could jet myself. <laughs> I think we. I think we're about to be experimented on. Some like kind of shy guy in the corner says. He kind of looks up. He's got a hoodie on, and and he just says, "I asked the AI questions while I was in my pod, and they're going to relieve us of our existence. I think I think they're killing everyone, and and going to experiment on those of us who have this condition." And he looks at his amber skin. <clears throat> I think we need to escape here. We need to get away. The AI is going to kill us. In fact, I, I think we need to escape Ganath entirely. Is anyone able to fly here? I kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> and then someone, a bunch of people like kind of turn and look at you. And uh, one of the one of these um, white, crystal, and clear-looking Janasi comes up to you. And, and, uh, and he just says... I, I don't know what I'm what I'm capable of, but I I know that I can do this, and he falls face first, and then like all of his body just kind of forms like a gust of wind that hovers him there about a foot off the ground, for like ten seconds, and then he stands back up. Uh, is anyone here able to shape Earth? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I clearly have something, con I'm able to control fire somehow. Uh, what about you, Bob? And he turns, uh, to, to the dude next to him and, and the guy, he's got a, got green skin and, uh, he just, he looks down at the ground like, oh, worth a shot. And he starts to try to move the ground, uh, with his mind and the dirt at his feet starts to kind of ripple and like, almost like ripples on a pond. <laughs> He's like kind of phasing the ground around, uh, and then it starts to crack, and you feel the whole mountain plateau thing that you guys are atop kind of go and shake a little bit. I'm I'm going to ask him. Uh, see if you can make an incline down from here. We need to get out of here. I'll I'll do my best, and he he starts to crack the ground apart, and and he's just like I can't I can't I can't control it, and it starts to crack, and this huge. I to the staff. Sorry, what? I would like to try to toss him the staff. Okay, all right. So you throw the staff over this crevasse. Uh, so roll me a. What would that be? An X. Uh, would that like be technically like a ranged attack? Not, not to do damage, but like... The yeah. Damage. I think just performance check is probably what we'll do. Yeah, do that. Alright, I'm gonna yell, catch, while I throw. Okay. At nine. I'm 
not getting good. <laughs> well, luckily the DC on that was five because <laughs> the the crack wasn't very wide. Uh, so you throw this across the way. It lands on the ground, and he picks it up and he looks at it for a moment, and he's just like, "What is this?" But he clearly senses something about it, and then all of a sudden it fills with uh, green and brown like swirls of energy inside this this crystal staff and and then he it it channels out of one end into right into the ground and and immediately the the crack in the ground seals up and the side that you're on starts to get kind of shaved off and forms into a slope roll me a dexterity saving check saving throw (laughs) <laughs> oh, no. all right you go sliding down the slope uh and you're you're headed to the edge and going to fall down this plateau um and you have dropped uh baby nerese oh, shit. and she is now tumbling down this this platform as well stop uh, her i yell <laughs> <laughs> okay if, if the person can see that and then uh, the, the dude adjusts the rod that he has and then uh, he forms that kind of a lip at the end of the slope. Hold on! And then you, you slam into this lip of <coughs> of kind of stone and dirt at the end of the slope, barely stopping you from falling off the edge. I'm sorry! And what about the baby? The baby also hits that, that lip and is um, but away from you, though. So... You're probably about five feet apart as you've fallen down separate directions down this incline now. I'm going to try to get over to and hold on to the baby again. Okay, that's going to require an acrobatics check. Nineteen. Okay, nice. All right, so you're able to grab a hold of this lip edge and you get to baby Norris uh, in time to pick her up. And hold, excuse me, him up and hold him. I I trained myself to say her so well, so that, so that it would. Um, anyway, okay. And so you pick her, up, pick him up, and you stand there, waiting to see what happens. And the dude just tries to keep forming uh, a path, and then he finally manages to to manipulate the edge of the slope into sort of like a path down where the spirals down this kind of mountain pillar this big mesa pillar and so you're now able to safely walk on this much much less steep incline you're gonna walk down it then okay all right so you guys begin to walk down it and then all of a sudden these pods come out of the sky like three pods and they land up top And you just hear a disembodied voice say, no, we must collect some of you for samples. And uh, three golems get out of one out of each pod and they start picking up people at the top of the uh, of the mesa and jamming them into the pod very carelessly. Some of them are getting knocked unconscious and the golems don't even seem to care. Um, yeah, so Bob and his friend are coming down the down the ramp. Ah, they slide and they hit that same lip. And then several other Genasi, probably about five of them, follow right behind them. Uh, how, how, how large is this group, actually? So you have about 15 people with you right now. How many were on the top there? Mm, 45? 50? And do we have line of sight with... You have line of sight on one pod that's parked near the, this, the, the incline that you slid down. The others are too far behind that hori- the horizon of that mountain, basically. I'm just going to motion everyone to keep moving. Okay. All right, so everyone keeps walking down this path. And uh, suddenly you spot, off in the distance down below, one of those evacuation ships evacuating, like, a rural town. Um... And you spot that that's that's probably your best way out, uh, or at least off of this planet. It's one of the ships that's designed to evacuate like the whole planet. They're landing all over the place. But now that you've been taken out to the outskirts here, um, you haven't seen one of those ships until now. But it's uh, going to be quite a journey to get there. How 
far is it? Miles, probably at least five miles. You're what really high. Thought? Is the is the the guy who was able to like hover in the air? Is he with us? Yes. I'm going to turn to Bob and say, "Give the staff to him. You see if you can float us over to there." I my, to the ship. my name's Steve, and look, I can do this. And he falls on the ground again and starts hovering. Bob, give him the staff. <laughs> Oh, what's this? Oh, what is this? And it starts to fill with swirling white energy. What do you want me to do with this? See if you can float us over there. We need to get to that ship before it leaves. Float? Oh, hmm. Let me see. And he he, he starts to focus on the on the rod, and uh, uh, or the staff, excuse me. And all of a sudden this energy turns really bright, and then he's, he loses his footing. And he falls off the side. Ah! And he disappears out of view. The side of the pillar that you guys are on. So here, I'll, I'm probably not giving you a good enough description. Let's get a drawing going. We were not at ground level yet? No, 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 no. <sighs> Come on, select the layer. Okay. I think I have a good visual of what happened here. Okay, so here's kind of this mesa that you guys are atop. And now he's kind of carving a path down, a spiral path down the, the mesa. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like that. And then kind of coming down, the side wraps around and comes down. He's trying to carve a path like that. You guys are up really tall. This is like, I don't know, like a thousand feet. Okay. Oh, anyway, <laughs> that's really bad. Um, okay. And then way off. In the, so down here, there's a bunch of buildings and stuff. Um, for this like sort of rural quote unquote town, and then the rest is all trees. There's trees everywhere, all over, and it's just as far as the eye can see, basically. And then down in this town, there's one of these ships, um, and I've been picturing the ships kind of like this, kind of shaped like. Uh, it's hard to describe. I imagine it was uh, them as kind of like very large UFOs, basically. That works. Uh, I'm thinking of them as more flat vertical instead of flat horizontal uh, in my head, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so, yeah, this, this ship has kind of landed down softly on the ground just outside this town, and it's, it's loading up people. But it's a small town, so it's probably going to fill pretty quickly. Um, and then just as you're wondering what happened to Steve, all of a sudden you hear, Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! as he, as he uh, like, kind of glides around the mountain and then lands back uh, where he fell. <laughs> I, I'm i very happy for him at the same time. Uh, things are very dire, so I, I skip over congratulations and say, can you do that to all of us? We need to get over there fast. <clears throat> oh. And with that, let's take a quick break because I my wife just made me dinner. I was Thanks, gonna ask, did you spill whiskey on yourself again? No. No, my, she just was going to bring me dinner at some point, and so I figured we'd take a break at that point. So let's take like a 10 minute break. Okay. And then we'll conclude. Alright. Sweet. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. <sighs> I was getting pretty famished. Okay, are you ready? Uh, hang on a sec. Uh, a friend's friend of mine just won a five thousand dollars scholarship. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. For what? I don't know. That's that's all. That's the only announcement that they posted. They didn't even say what the scholarship was for. No, it was just like an announcement, like, "Hey, everyone, this just happened." Oh, gotcha. Cool. Just let me know when you're ready. I'm ready to go when you are. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> you are making your way down the side of this mountain, and this dude has just landed. And what was it that you were doing after that? You were trying to get him to have you all glide? Yeah, I was asking if you could do that. Okay. Um, 
so he, he he again falls and tries to hover off the ground a little bit and that staff of yours begins to glow white and then he says take my hand okay, and he I holds his that. hand out okay you take it and then you immediately start hovering too just like that as this white energy wind energy kind of surrounds you okay. and and then he just says i can take you uh, take my hand, and he t- he puts his other hand out with the staff in it to someone else, and and they go to take his hand, um, but he's not able. As soon as they take his hand, you all start hovering for about half a second, and then it starts to wobble, and uh, and and he's not able to control it, and he just says, "I can't do more than two as the wind keeps whipping past him. Let's go. See if we, if you can ferry multiple people in multiple trips. We need to go." All right, hang on, and he dives off the side, and you, you and Baby Narice are alongside him as you go falling down super fast, like free fall basically, until right before you hit the ground, and he kind of does this little swoop effect, and he lands you on the top of a building down below the mountain. And then you're now on the top of this building with uh, like a bunch of like air conditioner looking boxes on top, and. Several golems are on rooftops, and they all turn and see you on this other rooftop. And uh, uh, is the escape ship on here too? The escape ship is at the other end of town. So you have two choices now. You can go across the rooftops. You see, you see three golems. One of them hasn't noticed you. He's super far away. The other two are on on rooftops within your line of sight. You can't tell if the second one has noticed you or not, but the first one definitely has. And it puts his arm forward and you hear uh, faintly. Uh, it's a little far away, but you hear objective. Uh, I'm going to just test the range of my absorb elements thing. I, okay. I'm, I'm going to try that on whatever the closest one is. Okay, so you try to absorb elements, but you just have a hard time focusing it. And, uh, and and you you're only able to do it within a, so- a short radius. I I don't still have the the orb I I held earlier. Oh, did you take that too? In addition to the staff, because you only told me you took the staff. I never put it down, so I guess. Oh, okay. I, I guess I tucked it away with the baby. Okay, that's fine. All right, so you still have the orb then, and you are able to focus it pretty far away. Um, but only within a certain radius of, of the destination. So you're able to f- focus it onto the first golem there, um, just barely. He's just kind of almost out of range, but not quite. Okay. Uh, what? How close are the rooftop surfaces? Uh, the rooftops are pretty spread apart. They're like a street width apart. So they're, they're not easily traversed by you. But, like, it's not just... Like street wide jumps across the rooftops, right? Yeah, it would be. You'd be jumping an entire street to get from one rooftop to the other. Uh, what was there another passenger with us? Just you, Narice, and uh, Steve. But Steve has taken off to get more people. Okay, I'm going to wait for him to come back, see if he can bring someone that can mold the earth. But in the meantime, I'm going to try to absorb elements from the closest goal. Okay, that first golem begins to, uh, you, you see a, like a shield around him kind of light up as you begin to absorb elements from him, and uh, he begins running towards you from his rooftop, which is like three rooftops away, and he jumps in through the air and lands on one rooftop and kind of falls waist deep into the roof before pulling himself back out, and then he jumps again to another rooftop, and he keeps running, um, and as... Let's see. Go ahead and roll me a performance check. Uh, I thought that was one for a second. I was really scared. That's an eight. Okay, so you drain um, quite a bit of energy from this guy before he gets to you, but he manages to take one swing at you uh, before, um, before you suck all the life out of him. So let me do that real fast. As this happens, I'm becoming more powerful. Um, so you feel like you're absorbing the energy, yeah, but it's it doesn't. You're not getting more and more powerful. In fact, you, for a while now, you felt kind of topped off. Okay. 
Okay, and so this golem runs up, but because of the lack of power and stuff, he takes one swing, but totally misses and then collapses at your feet. The second golem now has definitely taken notice and has leapt from one building to the other. All right. As soon as I'm able to start absorbing its element, uh, like whenever it enters the range, I'm going to be doing that to him as well. Okay. Uh, he he jumps uh, across one building and he's got one more building to go to get to where the golem first started. And he see he looks over and he sees um, where the golem uh, was, had fallen through the rooftop. And then he bends down and he picks up a giant chunk, a corner of the building that he's on, and he takes he lifts it up and then he throws it your direction, and he throws it through the air. And it goes flying all across all the buildings and then lands a few feet away from you. <laughs> and puts a puncture hole through the roof that you're standing on where, where it lands. And then he bends down to pick up another slab. Um, do I have any understanding of what kind of elemental energy I absorbed? Um, this, so... Yeah, you do. You can tell when you're absorbing a specific type, and this is not a specific type. It's like, it's all four, basically, together. Can I see if I can try to manipulate the roof that he's holding? Like, try to manipulate the roof he's holding, assuming it's, like, made of, like, rocky material and stuff? Um, yeah, you do. You try, and to no avail. Alright, I'm just gonna keep on trying to absorb them. Okay. All right, so you keep trying to absorb, and he's just outside of range, and he picks up another slab, and he throws it. And again, this time it misses even more. It's, it's, it lands on the other side of the rooftop you're on and, and poof, crashes down, but this time it doesn't go through the roof. It just lays in a heap on the top, and then the golem reaches down and pulls off another chunk of the building he's standing on. Uh, how far is he? Probably about uh, 200 feet away. Yeah, here is probably time to draw something. So let me put you here, and then we'll draw some rooftops. Okay, so you're on this rooftop here, and he's put a puncture hole here and here, and then you've got another rooftop over here, and these are street widths between these. That first golem started right here, and then he jumped over here, and then over here, and then over here before you drained him. And then this other golem started even further away. And now he is right here, basically, throwing rocks at you. From outside my range? Yes. If I get to the edge, can I try to reach him? You can certainly try. Okay, so you walk up to the edge, and then, yes, you are able to reach him, and you can feel the, the elemental energy drawing from him, uh, and he steps back about ten feet, and then he continues to throw another chunk of the building at you and misses completely. He, that was a horrible throw. <laughs> How wide is the, is the gap? Um, let's see. How wide is a typical street? Well, there's all sorts of kind of streets. Like it could be an alleyway kind of length. It could be. Uh, I'm picturing a regular city street, like two lane road. That's what I'm picturing in my head with for this so like little city. Feet. Yeah, let's say twenty feet. That sounds about right. Uh, there's nothing connecting the two buildings. Like no clothesline. No, nothing like that. I, I guess I'm sort of a sitting duck until Steve comes back. So you haven't heard from Steve in a while, and uh, you're starting to get the impression that maybe he's not coming back. Can I turn around and see what I see? Sure. Again. Roll me a perception check. Perception here is... Seven. Okay, so you look up, back up, and you can't see hardly anything through the night sky, but you do see... About five or six tiny little lights at the top of the mesa that you just came down from. 
uh, rise from the mountain and then disappear into the night. I'm going to turn my attention back to the golem to try to be prepared to avoid another thing thrown while I try to figure out what my options are. Okay. All right, there you do notice that uh, now that you've walked forward here that this hole in the ceiling has revealed a way into the first floor, the top floor of this building. Can I take a look and see what I see in there? Sure. From up here? Yeah, you look into the hole and you look down, you see um, a lit up office space, basically. A bunch of cubes, uh, and it's only lit up with like emergency lighting. So it's not, all the lights aren't on, but there's one, like a light every... 15 feet or so that's on um, even when it's like when the place is closed and right below you is a cube uh, like someone's desk cube uh, how much of a drop is it? probably about 10 feet I'll try to drop down if, if there's any soft surface there I'll try to land on that okay alright so you, you drop in there roll me a acrobatics check Natural one. <laughs> Alright, so you fall in. Uh, roll me a constitution saving throw. Had to get natural one sometime. It, all the lone, the lone round, rolls it was bound to happen. 15. Okay, so you fall in on top of, uh, of the, the cube wall, basically. Um, and you really hurt your back, like really bad, as you fall on this little thin divider right onto your spine. Um, but you are, you seem to be okay. You, you take a couple hit points of damage, but that's it. Is the baby okay? You do manage to hold on to Nerese. Okay. You're now inside this building and all of a sudden the, there's several like computer systems in this room and one of them comes to life near you. The lights come on. Is there a blunt object nearby? Uh, yeah, there's a chair in the cube, and there's a binder in the cube. What else would there be? A monitor? Uh, I'm going to pick up and hold the binder and be ready to throw at the monitor if it's not good. Okay, so this machine is up against the wall on the side of the, of the room, um, and a light pops on that just says Recycle. And then it stands up with these weird little like wheel extension extension wheels on the bottom of it, um, and then it starts to form into like a little uh, transformer looking little robot. But it's very meek looking as it starts to walk, uh, starts to roll down the aisle way between the cubes, very slowly. Yeah, it's down the aisle that your cube is on, and it just. Okay. Like it, uh, it, you said it looks like there's like a, a screen on it. Yeah, there's a little screen on the front of it, and that it just says recycle. What? I'm going to throw the binder at the screen. Okay. All right. You throw it at the screen. Roll me a. Uh, can you make a ranged attack? Uh, would that be in actions? Let's see. We'll just make this easy. Roll me a performance check. Okay, nice. You nail the screen with the binder, and pss, the the screen goes out. And it's just kind of sparking now, and the the little robot kind of comes to a halt and just. Can I try to use? Can I see if anything happens if I try to absorb elements on it? Yes, you try, and nothing happens. Okay, I'm going to see if if I can look around for a way to exit the building. Okay, so you stand up above the cubes and. You, you, the emergency lighting is still on, and you do see an exit sign at the other end of the room. All right, I'm going to head that way. Okay. All right, and as you start to head that way, um, your ba the baby Nerese starts acting up. <laughs> it starts, starts fussing, and uh, you approach the door, and you hear a sound from the stairwell on the other side of this exit door. Just kind of a... Something stomping? 
uh, falling, like falling down the stairwell. Uh, I'm going to open the door but not enter. Okay. Uh, you open the door and you see the hole in the roof from the other, um, where the other going through the other slab. Okay. All right. So you you head down the stairs, and then there's a little bit of light coming from the starry night sky outside through that hole in the roof, and then all of a sudden, while you're heading down the stairs, the light becomes obfuscated. Do you look back up? Uh, yes. Okay. And you look back up, and you see the familiar colors of one of the golems. Uh, as it rips open the hole even more so it fits and it falls down into the stairwell. Uh, next to another door? You are. You went down the first set of stairs and now you're next to another door. I'm going to try to burst in through that door. <laughs> okay. You fling the door open uh, as the golem comes falling down the stairwell and it tries to climb down and the rail snaps and it starts to fall down the middle of the stairwell but manages to get one arm onto the stairs uh, right next to where you uh, just went into the this other floor. <clears throat> and now it's trying to bust its way through the, the huge concrete wall of the stairwell into the floor you're on. <laughs> the whole place is shaking. Okay, so you go to absorb elements and you can definitely feel its presence from you nearby. And just... And then it's, it's energy depletes. Uh, do I see another exit sign uh, anywhere else on this floor? It's on the doorway you just came through. Uh, is there no other stairway, stairwell I can access? No. On the other side of the... Well, not the other side, but one of the, one of the sidewalls is a bank of, of elevators. Not that I would know what that is. Yeah. And just, uh, yeah, roleplay. Because as a player, you would know, but as a character, you would not. Right. Uh, can I open the door again to see... I see. Um, sure. The door is is now barely holding on to the door frame, so as you touch the doorknob, it kind of goes, <laughs> just crashes down in front of you, and you see a lifeless golem in the stairwell. Uh, am I able to still descend the stairs? You will have to crawl over the golem. I'll, I'll have to do that then. Okay. Roll me a dexterity saving throw. Nice. 19. All right, so you crawl over the golem, um, and then this place is... Everything is kind of starting to shake as you hear the, the the evacuation ship is starting to rev up its engines, preparing to do a burn. And so you're able to run down out of this building, and you run out into the street, uh, and you see the ship is just about ready to take off. Can I, I'm going to try to wave my hand out, like perpendicular to it not towards it and shoot out fire try to get his attention okay nice okay roll me a performance check I inspiration <laughs> already. <laughs> <laughs> all right so pff, you try to spray some fire forward but it just blends in with the with the city that's now already getting wrecked by these golems that have dropped in um, and so they, they don't see you and they take off, Shit. but you do see where they landed. Maybe there's someone over there that can help you. You can head that direction. If you like, you can head out into the wilderness. Now, if you want to, you can, we can do a whole nother session of this. If, it, if we go too long today or something. So, um, we can do a follow up session if you if we're not, if we don't get to the, to the end of this. So feel free to just explore wherever you would like to go. It's not you're not being rushed. Uh, I'll try to go to where it landed. Okay. All right. So it's gonna take you probably a couple hours in the middle of the night to get uh, across the city here, especially trying to be stealthy. So I assume, I assume you're gonna be stealthy, right? So roll a stealth check. Do I hear any other golems? Uh, yeah, you hear them all over this this little town now. As they're wrecking, t wrecking the place, looking for you. Uh, all right. Nice. <laughs> that was almost a one again. <laughs> yeah, I saw. 
All right, so you're able to slip through, slip through the, through the night, unseen by most things, um, but you I do encounter several Genasi standing around um, in the street here, um, between you and the the giant uh, landing pad where this ship had landed, and they're just kind of they're just standing there uh, looking around, and then you notice that they're holding weapons. They're holding some some types some set a set of guns. Okay. All right, so you stay hidden and you watch them for a minute and they're just kind of standing out in the street looking around and pointing at things and then talking. Um, and one of the golems uh, comes out into the street and walks right by them and then into another building. Ken, is there a route for me to sneak to where the, where the ship landed that would stay out of their, all their sight? Um, you can run across the street to another building, uh, and go inside that building if you like. How, how far is the building, uh, that the ship was on? It is two blocks away from where you are. Is there an alleyway route I can take to try to get there? Um, yeah, so here, I'll just, let's erase some, let's just use this drawing we have here. So, the people, you're hiding in this area here. Uh, poking out of this building, and there's a bunch of Genasi in the street right here. Um, and so you can go into this building here, or you could try to go out this way and around that alley. You could try and go this way. Uh, there's a, The buildings are in a grid here. This is a very industrial little town. I'm going to try to head south and around the building. Okay, so this way. It looks like an alleyway to the south. Okay, yeah, there are no alleyways. There's only streets. Every single building has a full-blown street going by it on all sides. Okay. It's a very neatly organized little industrial area. I'm going to try to be as, as stealthy as possible. Okay. So you poke out onto the street, and there's street lights dotting the corners of, of each of these buildings and blocks. Um, uh, but you are... Let's see. Roll me another stealth check. That's not our natural one. Nice. Okay, so you are able to slip out there pretty easily, out and around the back here and, and down this street. And then as you get into this alley, you hear sound coming from inside this building. The one adjacent to me? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to peek. Is there a door there I can peek in through? There's a bunch of windows along the side, but they're kind of a, they're a high, like one that had level higher than, than you. So you need to like pull yourself out to peer through. Are there any like trash cans or anything I could stand up on? Uh, no, not on this side of the building. There's not an entrance, so there's not a trash can. All right, can I look on the on on the south side of the building for a door? Sure. Okay, so you come around the side here, and you do see a door about midway through the building's length. Also, same w windows along the side of, up leading up to the door. The street looks empty for now. Okay, I'm going to try to quietly head to that door. Okay, and you look inside that door, and inside you see a golem rummaging around, smashing up uh, different rooms on the on the first floor of this building, just kind of busting out pillars. And then as he busts out one pillar, you, you hear <laughs> as like the top the floor just above it caves into that floor, and the golem just keeps sh shredding through debris going to move away from the door and the, the stairwell incident tells me I can absorb through walls. Okay. Right? Mm hmm So I'm going to move away from the door. I'm going to start doing that on the goal. Hopefully it won't know where I am. Okay. Alright, you immediately start doing that. Roll me a performance check. I hate that you're having everything rely on a roll because my rolls are not great. Right <laughs> now. Seven. Okay. <clears throat> So you are able to sap energy from it, but because of how thick this building is, it's you're finding it rather difficult. Um, and immediately this this golem's shield starts flaring up and it starts looking around. And it starts thrashing around trying to find where the source of this is coming from. Uh, I'm 
really sorry. My cat, my cat needs to be let out of the room really quick. Oh, you're fine. I'll be like just ten seconds. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, where were we? Oh yeah, you're still draining the energy from this golem, and and all of a sudden you see a fist come through the wall, um, the south wall, uh, as debris goes flying, and it pokes its head out and looks to the right, and then you, let's see, roll me a acrobatics check. Another seven. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you're not able to get out of there quick enough as its head turns and it spots you. Um, its energy is starting to... The shield finally flickered off and it's trying. It's starting to head towards you. It's definitely going to get to you before you drain it. All right, well, I'm obviously going to be backing up then as I do this. <laughs> okay. All right, so you back up, and then as soon as you back up into view of this corridor, you see a bunch of those Genasi uh, coming down down the street with uh with their guns and the hey get them what are you doing here and then they they raise their guns and they start chasing after you uh i'm gonna continue past moving to the east here okay I'm trying to drain the golem okay all right so the golem continues to run towards you as, and it's right on your heels as you continue running away and baby nari starts fussing again and and they're like, I hear him over there! And they stay, they split up around the building, and two of them are trying to come at you from the other side. And then the other two are still coming down this way. And then the golem, the golem gets right up on top of you and just says, Objective modified. And then it turns around and starts to chase the, the other two guys that are coming at you. And just, poof, poof, just like, smacks them way up into the air, into the sides of these buildings. And then the golem uh, turn, turns around to you and just says, Please stop draining energy. I do stop before it stops. <laughs> okay. And then it stops and, and it's very low on energy now. And, and it just says, I evacuate. Can I? I would like to, to shoot fire into it. Shoot fire into it. Okay. Yeah, it seemed to charge it the first time I encountered one. Did it? Yeah, you said that like it was absorbing and it was like looking like it was on fire. It was on fire. Yeah, I don't think it was absorbing it. <laughs> uh, that, was the, that was the impression I got. No, like you lit the energy that it had like on fire. It was like fueling the fire basically. Oh. Do you still want to do it? <laughs> Uh, if that's the impression my character got, then okay. I yeah, I didn't mean to imply that that it powered up the golem or anything. It just kept running at you while on fire. Am I able to understand what it was saying just now? Uh, you you managed to get the word evacuate, and but it pointed. Uh, it was pointing at you, and then it's now just like. Um, if I'm, so I would like to try to approach it and see if, if I'm making con contact with it, if I can return energy to it. Okay. All right. So you touch it and you do feel like you can channel. So roll me a performance check. Cause it seems like when I tried this back on the ship, something happened. Natural twenty. <laughs> nice. All right. So Finally. as you touch this golem, the uh, the sphere that you have for your focus, you just suddenly it all clicks, and you are able to channel all of your uh, elemental fire energy through this sphere and into the golem as pure energy, and the and the swirl of colors uh, that made up the golem before get replaced by this swirling red, orange, uh, yellow flame as it fills the crystal uh, crystal golem and it comes back online and it, and it just says evacuate objective evacuate test jade Norris jade and then it, it starts running down the street this way All right. 
Um, how, what was its position when I was when I was touching it? Like, was it kind of crumpled down? Yeah, like hunkered down, like its head was kind of down at your level because it like was. Uh, could I, if it, unless it seems to resist the attempts, can I try to like climb onto its shoulder? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, do you say anything? Um, no, I just kind of like feel for if it's like gonna shake me off as it's gotten its power back. Okay, so as the power is coming back on, you try to get on its shoulders and straddle its its neck. Uh, no, I figure that has really broad shoulders I can just, like, sit on. Oh, okay. Yes, they are pretty big. Okay, so you climb up onto the shoulder, and then you hold on to some of the, like, crystal uh, indentations on its on its weird uh, robotic head. And uh, it stands back up, and then says all of what I already described, and then begins running this way. Now you on top of it. Excellent. <laughs> I was imagining, like, before it even started moving away, I was like, I want to ride this thing to victory. <laughs> All right, so as you you round the corner here, uh, you encounter another golem coming from this way, and another golem coming from this way, and the golem stops in the middle of the street right here. I'm going to move your token for it. And uh, kinda, this, this golem begins charging. <laughs> And uh, it just says objective, and then jumps in the air, and your golem ducks, and and then says hang on, and runs this way, and just does a jump and a sidekick right into the golem, separating the one half from the other half, just poof, just right into the body. This is fantasy rock and stock and robots. Awesome. <laughs> and then you hear more voices. And uh, it says, they're getting away! And, and four more Genasi come uh, leaning out the windows of this building right here that I haven't drawn. Um, there you go. And uh, they, they immediately uh, lean out the window with their guns and they start shooting at you. As they're... soon as I see them, I want to try to start absorbing their, their energy. So they don't have any energy. They do not, they're not elemental Genasi. They're just Genasi. Well, I'm going to try a duck, like, behind the, the golem's head, if I can. Okay, yeah, so, uh, roll me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 15. Okay. All right, so you are able to get behind the golem's head and just ping, ping, as these energy bolts kind of... Uh, bounce off of the golem's head and you continue sprinting through the town and you end up um, at the landing pad finally and you are on the top of the land you make your way to the landing pad there's a stairwell that leads up up towards the top of the landing pad so you can go that way or you can go underneath it sorry uh, could you explain the landing pad yeah here i'll draw it let's see so you come out of the city block, so here's a building, 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 and then the landing pad is like, it's like this big um, pentagon or octagon shape, that's what I'm picturing, uh, come on, I guess I can't, there we go. So don't pay attention to the lines outside of the, the map there. This, we're just seeing your view from where you are. So okay. you come out of this alleyway here. And then there is a stairwell right here. Basically, so... And then the stairs kind of go up, up the stairwell. Or you can go underneath... So you can go up and on top or underneath this platform. And there's like little pillars holding up this this landing pad platform. And so underneath just looks very dark but covered from the sky, no rain. But then up top would obviously be where ships would depart. So And it didn't look like there was anything up there that or I could see in the distance. Not that you could see, but yeah. But the only ships you would have been able to see from that far away would have been the giant ship. So, uh, how sturdy did the stairs look? Sturdy. The landing pad hasn't doesn't seem to be damaged at all. Uh, how large are the stairs? Do they look golem sized? Oh yeah, they're huge. All right, and what's it look like underneath? Just dark. 
try. Uh, can I? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to. First of all, are we not being shot at anymore? <laughs> Uh, no, you ran past them, so those guys were over here. So they probably are trying to find you right now, but you ran past them and turned. Okay. Um, I'm going to, to say, I'm going to pat the golem on the shoulder. I'm going to say, you're doing great. Hang on a second. I'm going to shoot a firebolt under there to see, try to light it up and get a glimpse of what's in there. Nice. Okay, so you do. You shoot a firebolt inside of there, and you light up a bunch of of the area and you see a ton of pods like those travel pods just kind of parked under there off and quiet how do i know if i can trust them <laughs> uh they look exactly the same as the ones i've been in so far basically right aside from the hot rod design yes um i'm going to, i'm going to pat the golem on the shoulder and say uh, let's head up to the top. Objective confirmed. And then the, the it books it across the street and up the stairwell uh, and gets you up to the top. Um, and there is a small little craft uh, on the edge of the landing pad that, uh, that looks space worthy. All right. Uh, probably not golem sized. Um, no, definitely not. Evacuate, uh, Ganeth. All right, I'm going. I assume that takes me to the ship. Um, yeah, so it takes you up to about right here and dumps you off. It is now raining really hard on top of this landing pad, and it's still very dark out. Uh, but some of the lights from this town and stuff are reflecting off of the wet surfaces and stuff around you. Gotcha. I'm going to, as it as it lets me down, I'm going to pat it on the arm and I said, I'm going to thank it graciously. Okay. Uh, and then it says, hurry. And I, I hurry into the craft. Okay. All right. So you go to get in, um, and you have a, you, ver you have trouble sitting in the seat with the, the pilot seat with Norris. Um, but you notice that there are a couple of seats in the back there, um, that are like, not really seats are like half seats and they have belts and buckles on them and stuff. And surprisingly, one of them has a baby carrier, like a, like a car seat going to attempt to put Maurice in the baby seat. Okay, roll a performance check for me. Yeah, I, w I completely understand this because I probably haven't seen a baby seat. <laughs> uh, 17. Okay, so you uh, you managed to put her in the baby seat. It seems pretty intuitive. And then the latch on the baby seat kind of magnetizes to the other end. And then... Uh, the uh, the display at the front of the ship lights up about that time and and just says, "Welcome, Tess. Your escape your your escape vessel is ready." Uh, I'm going to. I don't know if it's listening, but I'm going to say, uh, "I'm going to get into the pilot seat, and buckle myself up, and say, all right, let's go.'" Okay. So as you go to get into the seat, um, you hear behind you a crashing sound as a golem hand comes through the back. And rips the pilot seat out of the out of the ship, barely missing Norris, but pulling you and the seat out of the ship. And then, you, uh, just as you get ripped out, you hear the voice inside saying, "Please state command." And go. you get, you get pulled out into the into the street. You said go. Yes, I yelled go. Okay, as you get yanked out by this golem hand, strapped you're strapped into this seat that it pulls out of the of the thing. Um, ignition authorized, and the ship immediately closes up the back platform here and takes off. And the, you are now thrown out onto the wet pavement with the golem as baby Norris is flown off in this ship. And I assume... Uh, so what's the golem here doing? The golem has thrown you to the ground and is now um, coming towards, like stepping towards you. Right, you are I'm prone. Try to ab absorb it. Okay, so you you Where, roll wait, me up. Where's my friendly golem? You don't see him. Uh, I'm all right. I'm gonna keep uh, absorbing this golem here. Trying to back away. Okay, so you go to uh, absorb it, and and as you're absorbing it, it starts to slow down, and it gets one punch off <laughs> and misses, 
And then it gets another punch off. It's right next to you. Damn. <laughs> All right, so he, he goes to punch, and then the, the energy, you just finish off draining the energy, and he falls backwards, and his head kind of separates from his body and rolls over this way. <clears throat> uh, how how big and heavy does the head look? Mm, probably about 30 pounds, maybe. And how close is it to the ledge? It's pretty close. Like, you could kick it down here if that's what you're trying, thinking of. Yeah, I, in kind of in anger, I'm going to, to shove it off of my foot. Not kick it, because kicking rock sounds like a bad idea, but I'm going to shove it off. Okay, and as you go to kick it... You realize that uh, you recognize the damage on the top of the head um, as the same head of the friendly golem. Okay. So, it was the friendly golem. Okay, and then you are left in the rain. And you look up and you watch as the ship takes off with baby Norris inside. And he sails off into the unknown in 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 the sky leaving you behind and that's where we end this part of the session as you suddenly are shaken awake by and you find yourself in familiar surroundings here's the map and uh let's see take away tests so uh super superman story huh let's see test 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 hold on a superman origin story <laughs> There you go. There, now you can choose Marina. <laughs> and you send sent Narice off. Uh, well, I mean, it, it ended up that way, but you were uh, you were certainly able to go had you uh, survived your dexterity saving throw. <laughs> uh, well, whoever you was in that instance. <laughs> yeah, true. And uh, you find yourself awake in this chamber again. And, uh, hold on, where's my, let's see, dungeon, there it is. So you're back in here again, and then Piratesh pulls her hand off of your head, and then she just says, that is very helpful, thank you. What just happened? I unlocked a memory with deep within your mind, deep within your genetic code. You can. You'd have no need to thank me. This is a gift you were previously unaware of that you had. You carry the memories of your ancestors. You mean Tess survived? I'm sorry, Tess. Uh, whatever you did for for a while there, I was, I was someone named Tess. All of the memories of your ancestors travel along your genetic line. So, yes, whoever you are seeing must have survived. I kind of look down and think for a bit. Um. So... Why would you show me this? And then suddenly Dragthar comes back to consciousness and and he just says, My faith is renewed. I knew you were the one true god, Piratesh. I dedicate my life to your service. And what'd you say? Uh, I said, why did you show me this? I showed you this because I needed you to be aware of the memories in which you hold. As you travel around and do and, and do what I ask of you, I may find more of these ancient nodes where I can channel my energy into you and unlock more of your memory. Thank you? I'm just, I just look very visibly con confused and not sure if I'm saying that. You will understand one day, young Marina. I am here for you, despite your suspicions. I care about your future. I hope you can forgive me. I forgive you. Of course. There is nothing to forgive. 
You are young. You are naive. I'm here to guide you. Can you guide us to the pump? I, your conflict with the Dominion is up to you to resolve. But once you are done there, I look forward to seeing you in the Aarakocran region. Their people are in need of great help. Um, we'll help them as soon as we can. Um, but first, we... Uh, there are people here who are in more immediate danger. And we are trying to save them. I understand. I will leave you to your petty mortal con existence. And you can resolve your petty mortal problems. In the meantime, thank you, Marina. I needed that. Needed what? I mean, you needed that. That memory. Can I make an insight check? <laughs> yes. Try to see if I can tell, like, any greater meaning from that. Sure. Uh, eight. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. She seems... So you get the pretty much the same impression from her you've always get, gotten from her, that she's mysterious. You can't tell if she's... Good, bad, what her motivations are. She definitely just, but she definitely does seem, as usual, like she's holding back or obfuscating the truth or something. Uh, before you go, can you, what did you need? I needed nothing but to reveal to you the truth. That is all I can tell you. For now. And then her. Hologram winks out of existence. So I came out of this as skeptical, skeptical as ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marina did, I mean. Alright, that's it. <laughs> uh, What'd huh. you think? <laughs> uh, I think the sound is still playing. That is true. Now it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a ride. <laughs> I think I think it's just fascinating, both like in character and out of character. I'm thinking, wow. So you're implying to me, based on how like you know, existing and giving memories to others usually requires you to be alive. I'm kind of fascinated by the implication that test made it out of that alive. Mm-hmm. And I find it really interesting that it turned out to be a Superman origin story. <laughs> of the, not of the baby, necessarily. Although that certainly sounds important. But of the towel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the towel is uh, the one thing I knew you'd latch on to. <laughs> For sure. And now I'm just imagining, like, kind of like in uh, Superman origin story or in uh, Mega Minds, the story, starting at that. It's just... The same thing, the same events happening, but the camera's focusing on the towel, not the <laughs> child. <laughs> yep. Baby Nerese and his towel launched into space. <laughs> so my, my first guess is that Nerese is, like, Marina's actual father. That is a good guess. Is that the correct guess? I can't <laughs> tell you. I suppose I couldn't tell any, any like facial features that would turn out on the adult from from the baby's face, huh? Nah. All you knew was a uh, was that it was a female or excuse me, a male Genasi with blue skin after the incident. And what, what kind of shade of blue was it? Um, like Marina. Same shade. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. I'm going to go ahead and turn the stream off now. Oh, Thanks. I thought you were going to do a sign out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to do one yesterday because I was so tired. Or on Saturday, I mean. But, so covered uh, in whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Uh, if nobody else signs up for a one-on-one -on -one session between now and Friday, then I think the next one is Thursday or Friday. Actually, let me look real fast while I have it open. Uh, yeah, Friday. So the next one will be with Deranged, believe it or not. And, uh, we'll see you guys then. Bye.